All right. Now, what we're about to get into now is manipulating time. We've done some very basic stuff with uh, changing the queue time and adding in a downtime, but there's a whole lot more that we can do with time on this console per queue. So in order to show you what we're doing, I'm going to just take everything that's on there to black. So I'll use a select tool just to sort of show you um, how that function works. So you see on S12 there's select, and I just happen to know that um, S1, after you've hit S12, is everything above zero. So S12, S1 grabs everything that's on. I can hit the off button and very quickly we're in black. So I'm going to record that as my next queue, Q16. And I'm going to build up a state that is Q17. So it's going to be 62 through 72 at full. And that's going to be my Q17. All right, so here we are, we've got all these lights, very, very simply. Um, they are fading up over three seconds. If I turn them off and record the next cue, they'll be fading out over three seconds. And that might be the end of my scene. So for example, that's the end of a very, very lovely scene and very teary and, the, and our main protagonist is in centre stage and the stage goes to black. The director turns around and says, oh, can you just make the light that, that is over our central character just linger for an extra few seconds? You go, not a problem. Okay, so that's channel 67. Now, channel 67, we could actually give it a whole queue to itself and spend some time manipulating that, or we could just put a time on that one channel. You'll see up here, there's um, a couple of little buttons. One says levels, one says time. Out here on the hardware, you'll see that um, I likewise have a, um, a couple of buttons that say levels and times. So what these do is they actually toggle the view on the screen so that, I'll just hit times now and just have a look at the screen and see how it's changed. You see that all the levels have disappeared and what you might not be able to see on your screen but I can see on mine is that those uh, items that are actually in this queue have a very grey version of three seconds which happens to be the default time for this queue. So we've decided that, okay, channel 67, that one there, is the one that we want to happen over a different time. So I'm going to type 67 at... 8. All I've typed is 67 at 8 and on my command line it says 67 intensity time 8. Hit enter. Let's put a little 8s up here on this, this um, uh, window here. I'll update the queue and as soon as I update the queue you'll notice that down here a little icon has appeared which is a time icon. This time icon is uh, telling you that there is some kind of independent time happening as a part of this queue so that when you're in the levels display you know that something different is happening. So when I run the queue if you have a look at the screen you'll see I've actually still got selected 67 so you can see which one to watch. When I run the queue everything else is going to fade out over three seconds but that one's going to linger an extra couple of seconds and take that much longer to fade out. And the director says, beautiful, and you've just taken two seconds to do something and he thinks you're wonderful. All right, so that's very good. Um, now, everywhere that you can type a time, you can type number slash number and get delay slash fade. So if I grab all of those lights, I could, if I wanted to, go to uh, sorry, at, oh, I'll have to reselect them again, it's fat finger syndrome for you, and uh, all of those lights at 2 slash 5, and what I'd be telling all of those lights to do is to wait for 2 seconds and then fade over 5 seconds. Well, yeah, okay, that's useful. That's, that's, that's quite a, an interesting thing that you can do, and you can do that in any time parameter you'd like. But here in the uh, times window, what it allows you to do is something quite nifty. Now, I'll release all of those, and this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them go, now think about this, at 0 to 8. 
to 10 slash 2. Now what that command line actually means is that I want that range of numbers to span or fan over a delay of 0 to 10 seconds and then fade out over 2 seconds. And on my screen you can see that um, 2 seconds, delay of 1 second and a fade of 2 seconds, delay of 2 seconds and fade of 2 seconds and so on all the way across. So that when I update my Q18 now and I go back to the live view and I jump back a queue and actually run the queue forward. Have a look at what happens to the levels as I run them out. First one, then one, then one, then another one, then another one, and so on. So what this actually does is it gives you the ability to do um, very simple effects very, very quickly.